Um, well, we were, we were really trying to get through uh, Trejo, uh, who hit the home run. Um, and we felt like uh, right-handers were a little bit of a better option, that being said. Uh, we got him in a 3-1 count, and we had to throw a fastball. He did a good job of laying off some pitches, um, put himself in a good count to hit, and hit a ball a long way. Once we got through Trejo, we felt like the matchup was to go to crawl. Um, so, and he did an unbelievable job. Got him. <laughs> uh, no, he did an unbelievable job. I mean, Alex is a, is a big game pitcher uh, in big situations. It seems like any time we need a big start out of Alex, he gives us one. And uh, executed pitches, did an outstanding job. Thought he got better as the game went on. Uh, so uh, Alex, uh, you know, definitely deserves uh, a lot of recognition after this game. He did a great job. No, I just had to wing it. You know, I had to wing it. So, uh, you know, they couldn't play it because it's an NCAA regional. Uh, but, you know, we felt like we had to do it. You know, we do it every home game. Uh, so, uh, you know, they asked me to go up there and, and lead it. I didn't, you know, I've, I've got some skills. You know, I, I'm baseball coach and, uh, you know, a, a, a band director, I guess, now. So, but no, it was pretty cool. Well, I focused first and foremost on UNC Greensboro because it was very important for us to make sure that we were prepared for them. Uh, we've watched a lot of video on all of our opponents. Uh, we spent pretty much the whole week uh, studying every team in this regional, watching their games on film. Um, I'll get here early in the morning and watch them again, uh, try to watch as much as I can um, on their starting pitcher. But, you know, we all know what we're getting. We're getting one of the best in the country. And that's the bottom line. So we've got a tough test uh, tomorrow night, but we got Barnes going, and Barnes is as good as anybody there is when he's on. So uh, he's going to give us a chance. But we'll try our best to prepare a little bit more for Vanderbilt now that we know that's who we're playing. Uh, but we we have a pretty good idea uh, just based on uh, video research and scouting reports, and you know all the tools that we have. Well, you know, I think that just shows the respect that they have for Seth. And I think, uh, you know, Link played for, for Mike Martin. And uh, Mike Martin is one of those guys that will do everything he can to not let your best hitter beat you. Uh, so, you know, when you go in, when it comes to a game plan, you know, sometimes it's pretty simple. Just don't let their best guy, uh, when they get runners on base, beat you. And, um, you know, I, I, I thought it was a smart move on his part. Uh, but we knew and we said, uh, pre-game that, you know, somebody's going to have to hit uh, with runners on base and going to have to hit behind Seth and Pender once we get guys on base. And we put Jackson right there behind him, and uh, he delivered a big blow when we needed him to. Wes, can I have to ask Ron, Sam, what did that mean for you tonight to, to get that big hug from Seth there crossing on play? And, you know, was your dad on your mind a little bit when that happened? Yeah, I mean, you can't really put it into words. That was cool. I mean, that atmosphere, man, it's the kind of stuff you dream of as a kid. And being a part of it, you can't really put it in words. It was awesome. After your first couple of bats when they walked set to get to you, were, you, were your, any of your coaches, your teammates kind of coming up to you give you encouragement, or was everybody kind of letting you be with your own thoughts? Uh, um, no, they were giving me some encouragement. You know, one, one thing I found out throughout this season is uh, – just how big staying positive is through your at-bats. Don't, don't let one at-bat affect your next one because your next one's probably going to be the biggest at-bat of the game, and that's kind of how you have to treat it. So, uh, I mean, they gave me plenty of opportunities. I didn't go get it done the first two times, but, uh, yeah, I, I just kind of stayed positive, stayed aggressive, didn't really take offense to it. Seth's a great hitter, and, and hitting behind him, you're going to come across those situations. So I was glad I was able to deliver for my team right there. Alex. Yeah, I mean, you can't ever dwell on, on mistake pitches or when they score runs. You just got to forget about it and move on. Once it happens, there's really nothing you can do except for just keep battling and, and give your team the best chance to win you can. So, yeah, you just got just to gotta forget it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, every time you pitch, you're, you're able to grow. So, I mean, I try to grow each and every week, 
and no matter how it goes, good or bad, so you, you try to take what you can each week and, and, uh, and move that on to the next game. Uh, what was going through your head in the ninth inning? I'm, I'm sure you're pretty comfortable coming out of the pen after doing that most of last season. Yeah, it's kind of nice coming out of the bullpen again. Um, it was a good feeling coming in the ninth of the lead at home in front of that kind of crowd. Uh, for me, it was just making pitches and giving our team a chance to win any way I can. Um, whether it be starting around the bullpen, for me, it's just going into a game where I can help us win is most important for me. Do you kind of keep your edge up at throughout the game? No, I mean, coach come to you and say, hey, this could be a game where we may go to you for the last three or six outs of GP. I mean, you know, I will try to go into every game where I know if I'm live, I'm going to try to lock in like I'm going to go in. Um, unless I'm down for that day, you know, you can be a little bit more lax than – uh, loose in the dugout, but every day I'm in the bullpen and I know I'm live, whether they use me or not, or they tell me they're going to use me or not. You know, I'm going to lock in, pretend I'm going to go into that game, and so when I get in, I'm ready for it. After last week, how, for you, Pat, after last week, how was it to come in and, and have success after, you know, obviously that Virginia game uh, the other day? Uh, it's a good feeling to get an out. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> no, it's just good to get back on the mound and have us win uh, first game of regionals and, uh, you know, we're looking forward to a good night tomorrow night against Vandy, and uh, we're all excited for it. Mike, what would Pat's status be for the rest of uh, the region? Would he be available maybe Monday to have him again? Uh, I, obviously, that's something that, that we'll cross that bridge, you know, if we get there. I mean, I, you know, typically if you're – once you put a, pitch a guy out of the pen, you're just going to keep him in the pen typically. But it'll depend a lot on what we do tomorrow. I mean, he threw one inning. Um, you know, it, it just really depends on tomorrow. If we use him out of the pen, obviously we use him out of pen. Um, you know, then we're going to keep him in the pen tomorrow. But I mean, there's an outside chance, but I'm not looking ahead. You know, that much right now. Uh, I can tell you this: we got to lead late, and we want to go to him tomorrow. We're going to go to him, and we're going to do everything we can to win that that game too. And uh, if we need to use Pat, we will. A lot of it will be just dependent on how he feels. We always. Um, you know, communicate with all of our bullpen guys that pitch in that game uh, the next day once they play catch, once they get to the field, um, just to see how they feel and they, if they feel like they're ready to go the next day. He played great. I mean, he played great, had three good at-bats for us, made some good defensive plays. Um, you know, there's a, there's a reason that Logan was a guy that, that we recruited as hard as we did and you know, had a chance to – had to make a tough decision whether he's going to go into professional baseball or come to Clemson. He's a special player, a special talent. Um, he's one of our hardest workers. And, uh, boy, he stepped up big tonight. Very, very proud of him. Coach, what exactly happened with Jordan sliding into third? It seemed like he was able to shake it off. Well, he's just trying to make an aggressive play. Uh, you know, the ball kicked away from the catcher, and he's trying to get to third with one out so that we can score on a sack fly or ground ball through the infield. And when the catcher made the throw, it hit him in the throat. Uh, so that that's where it got him. So he was he was he's going to be fine. I'm sure he'll be a little bit sore, but you know in that moment he just couldn't catch his breath. So we needed to try to give him time just to recover there. But uh, yeah, he got hit got hit in the throat. Yeah, just purely pitchability with that kind of stuff. I mean, when you see a guy that that, that can pitch in the mid to upper 90s at times. You know, with that with with that type of command, you know, anytime you can command two to three pitches and you throw that hard, it makes it very very difficult because you have to pick one or the other. You got to kind of stay on the fastball, um, or you got to sell out to a breaking ball or an all speed pitch. And you sell out to an all speed pitch, and the guy's throwing 98, you got no chance. So it's very very difficult when you got a guy that can throw three pitches in the strike zone and he throws that hard because you got to really you know for the most part sell out to the fact that this guy can beat me with his fastball I got to be on time and I got to cheat to it and I got to get a good pitch to hit so um, that's what makes it tough you know we see a lot of 90 91s 88 89s you don't see a lot of 95 pluses uh, so uh, you know you just got to load up early and uh, and you got to be aggressive Um, I'm trying to think. Um, uh, the guy at North Carolina, you know, Bukaskas, you know, had a really, really good fastball, but he pitched with his slider more. But you know, he's a guy that run it up there in the mid '90s. You know, it, it, it. The bottom line is whether he's throwing, you know, 94, 97, whatever it is. If he's throwing that hard tomorrow night, the key is got to swing at strikes. I mean, we got to get balls over the plate, and we got to be on time. I feel, I feel confident that if, if we can. 
uh, understand our timing and what we have to do to be on time with a fastball like that, and we get some pitches over the plate to hit that we'll give ourselves a chance. Our guys tend to hit guys that throw uh, that pitch with their fastball fairly well. But again, it's another gear. And uh, first time through the order, we really, really got to lock in and get a feeling of what that fastball looks like, what his stuff looks like, and try to make some adjustments. The key with a guy that's got that kind of arm is you got to make adjustments from at bat to at bat, one time through the order, second time through the order. You got to try to grind out at bats because, uh, you know, he can get on a roll as good as he is.